What up, y'all? It's T-Turn. Today, we're going through more of y'all's Indigo Disc Theory. The last one we left off on is the whole Kieran time loop. Y'all, I want it to happen so bad, and I got more to see on it, but we ain't gonna talk about it for this video. We're gonna go to y'all's theories. Adding to your heat theory. Hey, T-Tar, I'm a fan of your theory on heat being brought from the past to the future where we're going down the Tropagus. You said there's a flaw in your theory about how heat is found holding the page shown here this one the handwriting is my own but i have no memory of writing this this is actually a fun ass idea i don't think y'all missed it but if you did i'll link it at the end of this the gist of it is when Heath put the image of tropicus in his book and wrote about how he was unconscious and had a vision where he was speaking to someone that he was experiencing the modern day events of us about to fight kieran with tropicus it's actually a crazy idea but the flaw in that idea is Heath has a page of equations and something relating to what looks like the time machine and it's written in his handwriting which means he didn't just get a piece of paper from the future somehow in his trance-like state he started writing all these equations that's the only flaw it seems he has something about that so either he forgot he wrote it because he doesn't remember much about what happened but what i think happened is briar gave the page to heat to question him about it but then something happens and he ends up taking it back to the past with them. Oh, it's a it's an endless paradox. Okay, so it's like Briar conjures up Heath in the modern day. And she's showing him the book and his original manuscripts. Like, Heath, what you talk about with this page with all the equations? And this is around the time Tropicus is defeated and Heath is brought back to his normal time. So he keeps the page with them. So his crew wakes him up in the modern day and he got this page and he's like, bruh, this is written in my handwriting. I don't remember this. So what well, that means what's going on here is that we've lost the original timeline of events. Now we're stuck in a time loop where somehow Heat's handwriting on all these equations exists in the timeline. But now the only origin we know is that Briar gave it to Heat, And so he puts it in his book when he publishes his Mysteries of Area Zero, because that is a mystery of Area Zero, right? He woke up with this page. That's kind of funny. Yeah, he, he mentions it here. A bootstrap paradox is a kind of paradox in which you create an infinite loop where something has no observable origin. I'm a hype, y'all. I want the Indigo Disc to add some kind of paradox. Game Freak knows this game is paradox themed. That's why they gave us one paradox already with the paradox Pokemon, right? They exist before they're supposed to exist. Arvin makes a point of it. So I'm hyped to see Game Freak mess with paradoxes more. Yeah, wouldn't that idea be so weird if Heat never actually wrote that book? Y'all, what if Heat never wrote the Scarlet or Violet book? Hear where I'm going with this. All he did was get the whole ass original manuscript book from Briar and then he publishes that. So in a way, he plagiarized, but off himself. And no one knows where the original book came from because that original manuscript would stay in Heat's family, then Briar would get her hands on it, and it would travel back in time to go through the same loop again and again. That means no one knows how the original book was written. It's lost to time. Game Freak, give us a paradox, I'm begging you. This is the only game you can do it. We can't do this if we go to Gen 10. The theme's gonna be like antimatter. There's something for those games. We have a game about time travel. Give us a time loop. I'm so hyped. Cause y'all gotta think, right? It's very odd Briar has his original ass manuscript. So it almost looks like he, he reads the book like, damn, this is pretty interesting. Yo! Y'all. Wait, let me finish my first thought. And so he blacks out certain pages and releases it to the public. But y'all. Oh my frick. What if the expedition that happened 200 years ago never happened? What if it was just heat alone? Going down to area zero and having fun. And then he gets brought into modern day for Briar to give him the book. And the book already has this whole expedition written from an event that no longer exists in time. So he publishes the book about this expedition that happened, but it's not actually from his timeline. So everything in the book never technically happened. 
And so, you know, the reason I'm saying this is because you know how they call Heath a liar, right? He would be a liar then. This whole book, it's not real. But at the same time, it is real. So it's like a sick paradox on them calling Heath a liar. Because he's both a liar and not a liar at the same time. The Heath that released the book never did experience all that. But all that did happen. Just not to the Heath that released the book. Yo! I'm freaking pissed. Please give us a paradox, Game Freak. The Time Machine? Hey, Titar. The Time Machine and the Scarlet and Violet book. It's thanks to this book that the machine is stopped. But it's most likely also the key to turning it back on. A small thought came to me when looking at the final artwork for the DLC. Maybe Kieran will steal Heat's book from Briar and will reactivate Sodom Tro's machine. I'm also not convinced that the machine is really a time machine. Okay, so you're right, but I'm gonna explain this. So this is how the time machine works. The AI is connected to the time machine and it's constantly running. It's, it's constantly running automatically. The only way to turn off the time machine and to reprogram it is to put the Scarlet and Violet book on the pedestal. But it's not actually the Scarlet and Violet book that's the key. Sada and Toro just put the, their, the password to overriding the time machine in their version of the Scarlet and Violet book. The AI says it was their favorite volume. So since they loved that book since they were a kid, they just put their key in there. So technically, unless there's a time loop going on here, Heat's original manuscript is not going to have the key. Or no other book in the world should have the key but Sada and Toro's. And yeah, at the end of the story, you can see both Sada and Toro, they take the book with them. So ultimately, they left the time machine crippled so that no one should be able to put it back together but your thinking is not wrong it is still weird to this day that you can just return to the time machine room where there's just a perfect slot for a book so the time loop idea could still work in the sense if somehow Sauron Toro's book is not the only one with the key then it would be a really cool place to revisit and see someone else trying to mess with that crazy ai time machine honestly i'll say this it'd be cool if at least you go to that room and you can trigger the ai to talk to you that would be kind of cool but honestly it's fine we don't need that time machine started up again but i would like them to explain that giant freaking Crap. At this point, Tropicus is a lot more interesting than turning the time machine back on, so I'm fine with that. Alright, make sure I shank that like button, y'all. The time loop ideas is what's got my attention, and I'll have so many thoughts on this, but I'll save it for later, so I'll cover more of y'all's theories later today. Take care.